I'm always a skinny latte. Always. Yeah. I'm more of a flat white. Pretty much all the time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but we can't make coffee. That's the thing. We, we just paid baristas that know how to how to make it. But honestly, Australians do the best coffee. They really do. All the best cafes in London that I found are either owned by Australians or Kiwis. I'm here at the London Coffee Festival where it's all about coffee. milk is really important in regards to coffee? Um, yeah, I think it's really important. Uh, there's all sorts of things that you can do. It mixes it up a little bit, it moves on from just your traditional espresso. Um, you can make latte. We've been doing latte art today, so there's all sorts of brilliant things that you can do with milk. Have you um, tried latte art yourself? I have. I was terrible at it. <laughs> do you think practice makes perfect? Definitely, definitely. Well, our barista has shown that. I think he's been doing it for years and um, he can do some amazing things. So. And you said you drink coffee yourself. What's your preferred type of coffee? Mm, I like a cappuccino, so a little bit of milk, but not too much. Well, it's a very sociable thing, isn't it? Like, you can meet up with all your friends, you go out for a coffee, so I'm always out for a coffee. I'll get one in the morning on my way to work. Um, and it's, uh, it's not just coffee itself that is so good about drinking coffee and going out for coffee. You get the chocolate, you get the biscuits, you get the milk, you get um, all the snacks that go along with it. You know, coffee has evolved, especially in Australia and in the UK and now into North America, into the real specialty process. And people are very much um, interested in different flavours, single origins. Uh, so on-the-go coffee is really huge. Uh, that creates a really huge problem. Every minute around the world, one million disposable cups go into landfill. Yeah, so every minute there is enough plastic in 20 disposable cups to make one keep cup. I've got an, a few keep cups. <laughs> my favourite, um, that's uh, the new glass keep cup with the cork band that sits on my desk at, the, at work. There is so much coffee expertise here. I've learned something new with every person that I've spoken to. Um, it's a very similar journey to what we had in Australia. You know, where people started to get it, you know, that, wow, this is fresh. It's a culinary thing, not just a commodity coffee. Um, and espresso coffee in particular has, has really, it's taken off throughout the world. You know, we started out in Australia uh, with my old friend, Mike Allpress, um, started roasting coffee and um, um, promoting fresh, locally roasted coffee and barista training and, um, and, and sort of rode the third wave in Australia really when it arrived. And then we always had an eye on London and, and the UK because uh, you know things were uh, seemingly a little bit behind where we were really. Would you say coffee culture has exploded? Absolutely exploded in the last, particularly the last two years I think. So we moved up here um, and, and opened a little roastery in, in Redchurch Street in Shoreditch now got 140 wholesale customers uh, in and around London and and, in, and from Edinburgh to Brighton, um, Liverpool uh, to, to Bournemouth. So um, I usually drink a long black in the morning and then I have an espresso a couple of times during the day. It's the quintessential coffee cocktail. Um, it's Kahlua. We use some absolute vodka and very good quality, as I'm sure you would imagine at the London Coffee Festival, very good quality espresso. So we use one and a half parts of Kahlua, which is the, uh, the world's first and, uh, and the pioneering coffee liqueur. We use some absolute vodka, one part, and then we use one part of espresso. So we use Nude East Espresso, which is a local coffee roaster, and it has its own flavour, which mirrors the Arabica we use to make Kahlua. So we believe it's the ultimate espresso martini. And when you make it, is it a shaken or a stirred cocktail? You need to shake it really hard. The key to a good espresso martini is Kahlua, good vodka, absolute vodka, really good espresso, freshly brewed, and you have to shake the life out of it. So shake, 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 shake. It's, it's the classic coffee cocktail. 
uh, and we haven't been surprised by how popular it's been to be honest it's it's probably sold more than every other drink we sell today put together so it's perfect at any time of day absolutely the breakfast cocktail responsibly obviously uh, it, it's a double whammy isn't it so we have the caffeine and then it's actually quite a boozy cocktail so I mean I wouldn't advocate drinking loads of them because obviously that amount of caffeine and that amount of alcohol but um, yeah I think that that's, that's one of the, 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 the beauty or the, the attraction very much for the espresso martini is that it's a restorative and it also has you know that, that hit of the Kahlua and the hit of the vodka I think everyone from you know 25 year olds right up to 75 year olds and it's, it's definitely 50-50 there's, there's no, you, you couldn't pin it down and say it's definitely a female or a male drink with coffee and the coffee culture is alive and well uh, it's just a cappuccino uh, dark coffee strong one Ooh, depends on the day really it's a Saturday so probably three or four easily yeah done I am from France I'm English of course I like tea yeah definitely because in France we, we love coffee and we love strong coffee and like this generally in other country we say the, the coffee is not uh, enough dark, enough black. People obviously enjoy going to coffee shops, drinking coffee, so yeah. Coffee Festival. I'm Anna Surogatis and I'll see you next time.